Hi, hi everyone, and uh, welcome to this uh, seminar. Uh, I am Harish Tibrewala, Joint CEO of Miram India. I am delighted to welcome each one of you to this webinar on transforming digital experiences with changing consumer journey. Once upon a time, consumer journey used to be fairly linear, and brand differentiation was based on product differentiation. Over time, consumer journey has now become multi-device and multi-channel and product differentiation has become minimal. Also, consumer attention span has decreased. And thanks to the mobile revolution, the real estate available to marketeers to engage with the consumer is also decreased. In such a situation, creating some fabulous and personalized digital experiences that are omni-device and omni-channel is really the way to earn customer brand loyalty. To tell us how to create these digital experiences, we have with us today two eminent speakers. The first is Abhiraj Banerjee, Country Manager, India Sitecore. Abhiraj is a digital strategist and a marketing technology native. He has over 20 years of experience and he stands at the intersection of data, content, commerce, and marketing. And his experience spans working with global brands in North America, Europe, and Asia Pacific. Our second eminent speaker is Biren Balakrishnan, who's a senior solution consultant with Sitecore. Biren is a digital evangelist and he has a very deep understanding of ad tech and mark tech ecosystem. And at Sitecore, he is responsible for helping clients get the best value for their digital investments. Uh, over to you, Abhiraj and Biren. Thank you, Arish. That was, uh, that was really uh, nice, uh, the way you put the context of today's session. And a big hello to everybody who's, who's found time to join us today. Uh, my name is Abhiraj, and uh, over the next few minutes, uh, myself and my colleague uh, Biren will uh, walk you through some real-life scenarios, uh, the times that we are living in today, and you know how things are really changed in the way people perceive digital and experiences and brands. Uh, everybody keeps talking about a new normal. Uh, but I guess the, the most important thing is that the new normal needs to be adapted to by a lot of businesses and by technology companies as well. So by way of introduction, before I start presenting anything, uh, just a very quick uh, <clears throat> background about Sitecore. Uh, some of you may not have necessarily heard about Sitecore, but we are a, a global software company headquartered out of uh, California in the US. Uh, we've been around for a long time, for more than 15 years now in the, in the digital space. And we are a leader across most of the you know, analyst uh, ratings uh, for the space. Sitecore has uh, more than five and a half thousand customers globally. And uh, our journey in India has only started less than three years ago. And uh, <clears throat> what it really you know, has resulted in is a partnership with some of the best brands in the country in this short span that we have been uh, in the Indian market. So I will uh, talk through a few key things in terms of how we see business and how we see Sitecore partnering with brands around, uh, um, around uh, the area of digital. So, So when we talk about experiences and uh, you know how customers perceive brands and how brands react to what customers think, the most important thing is that there are many companies around the world that talk about <clears throat> the fact that they, they believe in the experience paradigm and they are very customer focused when it comes to experiences. However, on the other side, if you ask customers, we have a very different picture to tell you and that is uh, the big the big void in terms of you know what uh, marketers and digital leaders what they perceive to be the reality and what customers actually experience right <clears throat> this is where companies like 
us have really stepped in over the past many years. And while digital has kept evolving over time, um, and so has our technology, what is important is that Sitecore has helped customers, as in our customers, get close to their end customers. That's really what we stand for. And uh, that is the reason why we are working with more than 60% of the Fortune 500 companies in the world. And, and this has been possible only because as a, as a company, we are deeply embedded in the, in the world of experience. And we do that by using a combination of a few things, which is content, data, and insights, which help us to deliver the best possible experience that any brand can bring to their customers. <clears throat> and where we really have, uh, uh, where we really have resonated with our customers across the world is in trying to help um, <clears throat> them get a holistic view of their end consumer, help them to you know drive data-driven experiences, whether it's uh, whether it's web, whether it's mobile devices whether it's offline uh, channels or whether it's social or email, right? What's important is that everything, every bit of experience, every bit of content is driven through data. And that means it is truly data-driven and omni-channel, right? The third thing is that we help our customers get their content off the racks, like literally off the racks. We create velocity as well as efficiency in how brands create content and then get that content out to their customers. And finally, the most important thing uh, for any customer who uh, partners with Sitecore, uh, we have a 95% year-on-year renewal rate with customers. So of the 5,000 plus customers that I was talking about, 95% of those customers stay with Sitecore year-on-year uh, and really keep evolving as their businesses keep evolving, right? So why we are they're able to do that is because we increase their uh, we increase their capacity to do more, we help them reduce costs, and we help them go to market faster across every channel, uh, and really use digital as a pivot to you know scale up their businesses. <clears throat> now, when we talk about these key capabilities that Sitecore brings to the table, and any organization that's looking at this kind of a roadmap. What's important is what is powering that roadmap, right? It's, it's a combination of data, the intelligence that you take out of that data, the ability to apply that intelligence to your content, which is you know, basically personalizing at scale. And then finally, the ability to having you know, the delivery option across channels, right? So it starts at understanding what people want from you, and that is the data. Then looking at what insights can you, you know, take out from that data capture, using and applying that insight into how you would structure and present your content, right? And finally, going back to your customers, whether it's through email or web or mobile, and being able to deliver that content at scale and in real time. That's offset by, you know, over the years, like I said, we've been working with many, many customers, and these are some of our financial services customers uh, across different uh, countries and regions and geographies, right? And <clears throat> some of these uh, companies have, you know, been with Sitecore for years and really scaled their businesses. And the other important thing here is that not every, the, not every business in the, you know, banking and financial services space is, uh, has really been open about digital, right? We've had our own conversations and, and you know, uh, challenges and obstacles in terms of making customers understand why digital is important for them. Uh, and that sometimes it takes time, sometimes there are regulations, every country has its own set of regulations. There's data involved, which is equally important. And so those things, you know, really become uh, very important when we, when we look at this particular space. Luckily for us, uh, we've been able to, you know, work through all of those and, you know, so have been our customers, some of the brands that you see right now, have been able to really scale up and, and grow their businesses through digital. And uh, we have been very fortunate to be partners to them. 
Now, like I said, we you know we are relatively new in India, and we started very recently. But you know, uh, we managed to uh, you know be working with some of the best brands in the country uh, across different uh, industries, and that's testament to the fact that even though Sitecore uh, is a new player in the Indian market, uh, it's a big player in the global market. But even being new in India, people have taken to Sitecore. Customers have taken to Sitecore. Uh, because of uh, what we really bring to the table in terms of value, and in terms of the the trust that they have placed on us to take their business from digital to you know bigger heights. <clears throat> the Sitecore ecosystem is very big. Uh, we are uh, we are serving customers across seventy countries. You're you know more than thousand two hundred people. We have a very large community of you know technology contributors and actual developers. Uh, alliances with you know Microsoft and Salesforce and other technology partners, and we also have a very large ecosystem of uh, well-established systems integrators, consulting companies, and digital agencies. Uh, the WPP Group is a strategic partner, and you know we, we work with core partners like Miram as we take our solutions to our customers in different markets. <clears throat> and no conversation today is Sam's this, right? So when we when we were brainstorming through the content for today's session, uh, we were thinking about two things. And whatever you see here, nothing of this is unknown to you, any of you. Right? All of us are, are consumers in our own rights, and all of us have seen the changes that have uh, that have been brought to bear upon us in the past few months. So you know, this is this is very much you know what. All of us are experiencing, but importantly, from a from a brand or a customer's perspective, right? With what the world is going to be like, even in the next six months, nobody can really tell, right? Well, it could be six months, it could be eight months, it could be six months at some places, it could be three months in another in, a, in another you know place. So, with that in mind, um, those brands, and I can say this by experience, that in the past four months, we have seen a distinct change in you know how customers are now talking to us uh, when things like accessibility, inclusion, sitting at home and running your world through digital, right? That's really the term that I keep hearing. And the brands who have, you know, really taken to that are the ones that are doing a lot of work in this in this time. And you know, they're strengthening their ability to be able to have actual conversations with their customers, enable their channel partners, their distributors, their agents. And really look at how can I use this time that is upon us to ensure that I shore up my most important channel, which is digital, right? Because that will go on irrespective of whatever happens. And secondly, how do I take my offline processes and you know bring a lot of those to digital? And that requires major change management and major enablement of your ecosystem, your business ecosystem, right? So whether it's creating super app platforms, whether it is looking at uh, aggregators, whether it is looking at having you know a cross-functional team which is only focused and only and only focused on you know bringing digital alive as a channel, as a big channel in itself within a business. Those are the sorts of things that we are really have been looking at. Whether it's in India, whether it's in Asia Pacific, uh, the larger Asia Pacific region, or in other parts of the world. This is the most significant trend or change that we have seen direct to consumer in a time when the consumer cannot see you, cannot shake hands with you, cannot sit next to you, cannot have a conversation with you, right? Your partner cannot get across the table to you, right? Your dealer cannot come and pick up from your warehouse. What does that mean for a business to keep still running and still hoping to you know, minimize damage and increasing revenue as much as possible, even in these difficult times. Right? Applied to what's possible in these times and how we as Sitecore look at these things, uh, I'll hand over now to my colleague, Biren, who will not only talk about a customer journey and what it looks like for banking and financial services space in specific, what's possible through Sitecore, but we'll also give you a bit of a, a ready reckoner into you know what the platform 
what Sitecore is all about, what are the products that we have which enable uh, uh, really bringing your content to commerce story alive and really taking your digital to uh, you know uh, an elevated status you know in, in your business. So I'll hand it over to Brian for the next part of this session. Thank you. Great, thanks, Abhiraj. Um, if you could, I'll just share my screen. I think Abhiraj, you might need to end your share. Okay, perfect. All right. So um, I'm going to just highlight what's possible um, through what a, uh, what a demonstration we call Art of Possible. And we've built this around a, uh, a use case for a bank uh, in North America that is also going through the COVID crisis as well. So I think this is very topical right now. So um, as we walk through this, I just want to show you what's, uh, to demonstrate what's possible through this uh, customer journey. So um, if we look at the parts that make up uh, Sitecore, uh, and this is where I want to map uh, our systems to maybe uh, tools that you know are, are competitive set in the market. Um, I want to highlight where our strengths lie. We really have two key products, one being the experience platform and the other being the digital asset management system. So I'm going to highlight those. But let's start first with the experience uh, data layer. Um, our system, you know, it's a digital experience platform, it includes within it um, a data layer called experience uh, database. Now within this, we can actually store various um, data sets. Um, and based on the way uh, our software is deployed, this is actually within your data governance. So for BFSI industries, this is uh, from the BFSI space, this is fantastic. Because um, typically, you can't uh, deal with PII uh, in cloud-based infrastructure that's um, outside of uh, out, out of country. So typically, you don't see these use cases when you're using things like Google Analytics or Adobe Analytics. And you're normally running these off enterprise data warehouse-based systems that are using first-party data. But because we have the ability to then also get access to um, uh, like web-based data or digital-based data, we can do a lot. So for example, the experience profile can uh, sync up with your own maybe CRM systems, payment systems, any other upstream systems that you may have. So we can collect that on a first party basis. But we can also uh, append campaign data, analytics data, any third party data sources, etc. So this is this data layer is built in the system. And this is very important. And we'll highlight that as we go through this presentation. Then we're able to scale that through intelligence. So what we're looking to do is use some out-of-the-box features, uh, such as segmentation handling, <clears throat> uh, automation and nurturing of, of the leads through uh, marketing automation processes, optimization in the form of A-B tests and uh, personalization opt optimizations, uh, and then also analytics. So scaling that data through into the actual channels. So we will have uh, content management. So uh, you know, managing that front end. So be that the web or apps or any other digital channels. Uh, the digital asset management system. So this is a standalone system, which is uh, SaaS based. Um, then you know, we have the ability to even do PIM and commerce based functionality as well, all within the same platform. And then finally, you, know, you need to deliver that to the right um, users. So this will be going through all your omni-channel experiences, so web, mobile, social, email, etc. And you know, if we were to you know put this into simplistic terms, what we can call these is break these down into three systems: so systems of record, systems of intelligence, and system uh, of action. So um, you know, if I were to describe Sitecore as a product, it's a complete and holistic um, uh, digital experience platform that really brings your powerful data to the fore uh, through these three systems. Uh, and this is something I'm going to highlight again and again and make sure and under, make you understand why that's relevant, especially uh, in, in this you know, uh, uncertain times with COVID. So if we move on, and first I'm going to um, just introduce you to a site called Content Hub. So all your content, you know, all your content needed across all your channels is first aggregated into Content Hub. So it's providing um, a single source of truth, allowing you to then centrally coordinate these 
and streamlined processes for planning, collaborating, managing, and publishing content across all your channels, be that web, email, social, and even print and outdoor. Um, this allows you to distribute your content across a number of channels with high uh, expectations uh, uh, around um, you know, consistency, uh, richness, velocity, and personalization. So essentially, what we're saying here is that the Sitecore Content Hub enables you know, content creation and delivery as a supply chain, the content supply chain. So we look at the content creation, the publication uh, as a process, and then we provide a technology platform that allows for this execution of this process. Right. So uh, I want to make sure that we keenly highlight the fact that we can even deliver to channels like kiosks and ATMs, but we'll talk about those more as we go along. But you know, why is this important in this time especially? Well, we are now working in a distributed environment with many of our colleagues working from home. So having a SaaS based platform where you're able to collaborate and have a central repository and processes and workflows and approvals built in suddenly becomes a very, very useful tool. And so we're seeing an uptake uh, in, in this service uh, globally. Um, so let's uh, address this single source of, source of truth. So with Content Hub, what we're looking to help you know, the, your organizations do is to simplify the storage, management, distribution, and control of digital assets. So all content can be stored and managed in our digital asset management, DAM, giving stakeholders one version of the truth. So this includes uh, you know, a wide range of file types from images, videos, PDFs, and more. So uh, when the assets are uploaded, uh, the assets are automatically tagged with keywords, reducing time to manually tag each content item. And then when assets are all in one place and automatically tagged, we can find them more easily, uh, avoiding recreation or repurchase of images. Next, um, we're going to look at the ability to then collaborate on campaigns. So having all the assets in one place is great, but you know, actioning them and doing something with them is very, very useful. So what we have within Content Hub is this idea of campaigns, and each campaign uh, is comprised of smaller pieces of content. So um, right now, um, you know, you one of the key things that we're seeing uh, in the market is trying to, especially within your industry, is how people are coping with um, the current crisis. So for example, uh, you know, we're looking at trying to find new niche segments of business. You know, you know, we're, we're seeing dramatic decline in maybe branch-driven sales, limited serviceability, uh, you know, even constrained capacity in your existing digital channels, for example. So um, we're trying to find those pockets of value. So for that, you know, and those niche kind of campaigns, you really need to be very hyper-focused and personalized. So to do that, that starts with the content creation process. Uh, and um, here within uh, the CMP, we can actually choose to maybe focus on a specific campaign, uh, and we can actually target the piece of content to a specific channel directly from within the UI. So as you can see, I'm um, highlighting this display ad uh, piece of content. Uh, we can programmatically push that to the various ad networks that are needed. So for example, we can now see that ad uh, on a new site, right? And by very via your various buying platforms, you'll be able to see this here. Now, this doesn't mean that we're going to cut out the role of you know, your partners, such as media agencies, et cetera. They do a very important job in buying that media. But what we're looking to do is help that flow and process. So uh, the assets are available directly within the systems that the buying, uh, those buying platforms that the media agency will use. And it's a collaborative process. So next, let's say that user were then to click on that ad. Right, so we will start. That's a big for us, a big signal. So that gives us some affinity based on the ad that's been clicked on. That campaign ID gets passed through to the site. So we'll be able uh, to personalize on the very first visit. So even though the prospect you know has come in um, you know, uh, as an anonymous user, that that personalization can happen on the very first interaction. So based on that PPC ad, you know we may be able to change the hero image and so change that to maybe a home loan calculator image, uh, you know, and based on where they're browsing from, we may want to display the closest branch. And you know, if it's their first time that they've gone to the site, we want it, you know, they're in that early research, research stage, we show some about us content. 
So the personalization of this is really powered by that experience data layer I mentioned. So just like any of your traditional web analytics tools, we'll be able to do those same personalizations, but again, baked out of the box. And some of the benefits here are, if you're using tools like Google Analytics and Adobe Analytics today, uh, we can uh, complement those tools by doing data sharing with those platforms. But also, we have a much simpler method of tracking. Because we deliver the content through the CMS, there's no need for tagging um, and any kind of framework which you need to pre-configure pre the, um, the, the tracking of information. By default, all of this is tracked. Um, so the personalization of you know, content modules really, uh, from a value point of view, will increase your ROI and cost savings due to building only one landing page and changing content through personalization instead of having to build 20 plus landing pages specific to uh, campaigns that are live. Next, uh, as I mentioned, because we have that data layer and because we have tracking built in, we can start doing some very serious profiling. So we can actually build uh, a profile as the user starts moving around um, uh, the site based on that behavior. And we can actually profile them um, into many different brackets. So the, the illustration you're seeing here is the ability um, to score a user for a particular interest. In this case, a checking account. So we want to see, okay, based on their activity, how well do they qualify? Or do they qualify for other um, uh, matches instead? So this gives us watch products, basically. And you can be as flexible as you like. You can have as many nodes and as many patterns as you like as well within the system. So this could be um, quite a powerful tool um, for you guys. Um, so as the profile builds, um, the user, then we can um, start uh, you know, getting some more information from them. So let's say this visitor leaves the desktop experience, moves to um, a, uh, um, a mobile experience here. Then at this stage, um, we can work with um, various um, uh, you know, uh, different UIs that can help from a mobile and uh, from a responsive uh, point of view. Uh, and as their profile changes based on the information they're putting in, we'll actually start building up that data layer. So experience, if you notice on the, the bottom left, as this person starts entering more data, we will start personalizing that experience further. So um, as they start filling this in, then we'll push them to the, the right homepage. And um, you know, based on that second visit, we can then start putting more questions in front of them. So um, for example, once they've gone through that whole path, we can now get them to do something that will maybe push us towards a authenticated state. So previously, we were just getting more information. But now we're getting to the point where we're ready to make them fill in an authenticated state. Um, and that gives us some more information about them for, uh, from a known user perspective. So um, as we move down this thread, you'll see um, that uh, we're going to look at how we connect the dots from we, what we were previously talking about in this path. So uh, let's say you're a marketing team, and you want to review uh, and see what content is available and which campaigns are being targeted. We have this strategy view within uh, the CMP to see where there's gaps in your um, uh, content strategy. So this will give us basically the various campaigns versus the channels to understand where we are. So for example, we may be able to highlight this area here and see, OK, there's a little bit of a gap around maybe um, the blog content around mortgages. Maybe we need some more, or investments, or credit cards. And you can plan that content um, accordingly and then push that to the CMS for targeting purposes. Not only that. You know, this is really vital in the times of COVID. We actually have a collaborative marketing resource management tool built into the platform as well. So we can actually see where effort is allocated by a particular user. So um, within the content creation uh, process, we can see you know, which team members are allocated to which uh, tasks and how much of their time is being taken up. And you know, it'll even say when people are over uh, indexing as well. So this keeps things uh, you know, moving. And from a management point of view, this is vital. Um, so let's talk about how we can get that content out to those users. So within uh, the CMP, you have the ability for simple um, content creation. 
So this is not for a CMS. This is more from just a simple content point of view. So making this very easy for business users who are, you know, um, working from home, for example, and may not be a technical business users, uh, technical uh, CMS users, sorry. So I can actually collaborate with non-technical teams to create this content. Anything that's um, created within the CMP upon approval will get pushed to the CMS or any other channels as a content item. So this is um, now going into the more traditional CMS workflows. But because of the way that we can connect with other platforms, a single piece of content can be pushed dynamically, for example, to social media, YouTube, um, to um, you know, the website, apps, portals, et cetera, uh, in a very in a headless fashion. So all the edits can be saved and viewed as a new version, allowing for efficient version control and visibility of a version history. And also you can compare versions to track changes. So this is great just to see from a collaboration point of view who's working on what, what changes have been made, and then making sure that the right versions are pushed out or are assigned as the master version uh, to the live uh, production channels. Um, and as I mentioned previously, because of the way um, you know, we deliver this content, we can do that you know, tr through traditional web CMS, but um, we can also do this uh, via um, specific um, channels such as uh, our headless delivery, which we have uh, various numbers of tools, uh, one being JavaScript uh, framework. So we will deliver that to anywhere that can handle React Angular um, or Vue, uh, but we also support .NET Core as well. So anywhere that you want to do mobile or headless delivery, that can be done, including uh, let's say ATMs. But why is this important? Well, um, you know, as, as you understand, like maybe branches are getting more difficult. So any touch point where you can do a personalized message is a, becomes all of a sudden vitally more important. So that can be um, delivered upon as well. So as we start filling out all of this information about the user I mean, a post login, uh, we can now start you know, getting them to push towards specific, specific goals, such as um, a form complete or scheduling an appointment. So in this case, uh, you know, we're going to get that appointment scheduled. Uh, we can pre-fill a lot of information because we already have that data layer built into the CMS. Um, but we can also, you know, because of the, the, the tooling that we have around um, uh, the personalization and optimization, we can actually start building um, some really unique experiences around A-B testing or optimizing of the forms as well. So um, from this UI, we'll see the ability for you to um, you know, populate all of this information, push it to maybe any downstream systems like CRM, et cetera, or to agents. All very, very straightforward. So um, I mentioned that Forms UI that we have. Forms is uh, something that is a fairly large burden for a lot of BFSI companies. Uh, and we've seen that um, typically because they rely on integrations to downstream systems or upstream systems such as KYC or fraud detection, et cetera. Um, and because of that, they typically require a lot of IT investment. So um, what we're looking to do is to make that as easy as possible for both the business user and the IT uh, teams by having uh, a drag and drop UI that can link um, on the back end to those upstream or downstream systems uh, and really create a component based um, architecture. So, um, you know, from, from that user point of view, anything that gets filled in here automatically will get tagged and tracked within um, the experience uh, data layer. Uh, and then that can be used uh, for that personalization and engagement scoring. Um, so we are looking at you know, um, being able to score that user based on the activities that they've done on the site. Um, but we can also equally do that um, using any data that we've got get from uh, offline channels as well because of the way that we integrate uh, you know, offline systems like CRM. So for example, a scoring could be a chat with a telesales operative as well. So this engagement value uh, that we differ from our competitive set because this is completely customizable. So you can choose the scoring that you give a particular activity. And this can be done uh, programmatically as well. So rather than you manually deciding the scoring, Maybe if you wanted to use uh, our inbuilt uh, 
ML framework called Cortex, you could do that as well to bring your own model to uh, ascertain the best scoring to provide certain events. Um, you know, we can then, this is more from a uh, non-technical user point of view, um, we can then also integrate uh, various reporting uh, interfaces, such as uh, the path analyzer that I'm showing on screen now. So this is an interesting report that is slightly different to what our competitive set can provide. But taking that previous engagement score that we talked about, for example, the green is here where you're getting a higher value, uh, the, the engagement score. And then the thickness of the line denotes the number of visits that are going through. So you can see areas very rapidly of high value um, that aren't getting enough traffic and vice versa, you know, areas of large traffic that aren't get generating much value. And that will give you impetus to decide on where you need to start running your A-B test and optimization. Um, next, we're looking at uh, marketing automation. So the ability here is to send, for example, emails or any other notifications to customers in a drag and drop UI. So I know a lot of uh, teams within um, uh, your industry will typically be using tools like, let's say, Unica, et cetera. And you're running this off first party information that you have, maybe from Enterprise Data Warehouse, generating lists of customers and sending them off to marketing communication teams. Um, whereas what we're looking to do is really facilitate uh, a seamless flow. So that same scoring and analysis that you use to generate those segmented lists um, via you know, your existing data processes can be um, integrated into our system. So then we have that record of that as well. And this is where really the beauty of Sitecore. We are able to do this in a privacy and regulatory safe manner because we are installed on your own infrastructure. So you know, either your own private cloud or cloud hosting provider or on-prem. So this is, not on, uh, this is not on a cloud server in the US. So because of that, we can actually have everything handled within the system and have it syncing directly with your own existing legacy architecture, which means um, there isn't really a, a, a compete or a burden of um, uh, implementation work that needs to be done or, or governance um, review um, you know, for an amazing piece of software because we've got something that's really uh, accessible to you net right now. So if we look further down the chain, you know, mobile is becoming a channel that is you know, vital. Um, if, 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 a, if a solution provider comes to you and starts demonstrating web-based, uh, you know, traditional desktop-based functionality, uh, you know, you'd walk them out of the room at this point of time. And so, you know, we're very much focused on mobile with our headless delivery options. And uh, to that end, you know, we know that a lot of the BFSI companies are looking to get that engagement data and that relationship directly with the customer. And mobile is the quickest way to communicate with them. So you're able to push like in-app notifications and messages directly to your users. Um, and, you know, have that personalized based on the user experience or their activity, offline um, you know, segmentation, geolocation, etc. So we can push the uh, app notification to the, the app. Um, the beauty here is we have multiple ways of integrating with an app. So we do have our native SDK, but on top of that, we also provide a universal tracker, which is an SDK that provides the ability for you to push back um, signals to the main Sitecore platform, even if Sitecore is not the application that is powering the system. So a lot of the times you've already made your investment in mobile and actually you know, replacing that with Sitecore might take a, a long while. And in that case, you know, you know, let, let's not, you know, in, in this time right now, you know, money is tight for us to tell you to um, re-architect will be a big no-no. So instead, we will make this as easy as possible for you to integrate us with your existing platform so we can get the data out of that system. So even though we may not be powering the experience on the app, if you want to put the universal tracker in, we can still run the analytics the, uh, and um, the personalization experiences for you on that system. Um, it may not be as perfect as running directly and natively with Sitecore, but it, you know, uh, it helps uh, in, in the interim. Um, next, uh, we look at, uh, you know, maybe you'll want to download some pre-approval forms. So before the appointment you know, that was previously made, maybe you need someone to fill in a little bit of pre-work, get some forms ready uh, for that. So we maybe push, be able to push that 
um, notification uh, to remind them of, let's say, of the appointment, but also to get them to um, download the forms or have the forms ready on the mobile app, uh, ready for processing. So, uh, you know, with COVID, we know that branch um, interactions are going to be dramatically reduced, uh, if at all. And, you know, in different regions, we're seeing different approaches to that. So in some regions, we're seeing the ability to book appointment slots directly to um, work uh, with a rep at a phys physical location. Um, and I think that will something that will become more common. So rather than people just turning up blindly, they, they book an appointment. Um, and if that was the case, then we can do some really cool things. So, um, you know, within the store when they come in uh, within the branch or when they come in for that uh, appointment now uh, that we know that they're here for a specific goal or, or a few people are within the branch you know maybe for social distancing rules um, using uh, Sitecore and our headless delivery capabilities you know together with the fact that we understand who is in gonna who has been pre-booked for a particular uh, venue um, uh, and what are their kind of interesting goals we could actually start even personalizing the digital signage uh, in branch uh, showing uh, information that's relevant to the people who've booked appointments at that specific time right so bit of an edge case but it just kind of shows you the power of what's uh, available uh, with cycle Next, then you know they've gone in, they've had that appointment, and uh, I, 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 I think uh, Abaraj is answering some questions in the chat. But um, uh, you know we have those integrations with Salesforce, for example, where we can link down to a specific contact, uh, and we've got those inter pre-built integrations with CRM with Salesforce and Dynamics. Um, so if you're using things like Sales Cloud or Service Cloud or you know or, or, or Dynamics, we can actually integrate. Um, the contact directly in a bi-directional fashion. So let's say you know someone's come in um, to uh, to meet one of your representatives, or they've phoned up a, a tele sales representative. That information that's being populated in those CRM systems can then get synced uh, within Sitecore as well, so that then the next digital visit or digital interaction can get personalized based on that updated information and, and vice versa. The user, uh, your colleague who's you know, sat at uh, you know, the, the call center or in branch can get the information on intent or scoring, that engagement score, for example, based on what that user was doing uh, in their digital uh, visits as well. So it's a much more holistic and harmonious uh, setup. And because we pre-built those connectors with the major providers out there, uh, this should be a very, very easy uh, way of uh, capitalizing on your pre-existing investment. So let's say they've come in uh, you know, and they've now been approved for a home loan. That data will get upgrade, uh, updated. And then let's say on the next subsequent login, we have all of that information now. So uh, we can now you know, say welcome back. And rather than having a more generic experience on the post login environment, uh, which has always been a challenge, and I, I, I think somebody um, I mentioned, I think Nakul mentioned a question around how do you differentiate tracking between in, in logged in and logged out visitors. Um, so, you know, uh, as soon as someone's logged in, we have that against an authenticated state. And even if they're you know, an anonymous visitor, we're still tracking all of that information against a cookie. Um, but of course, because we're delivering that uh, information first party, we're actually also protecting ourselves down the line for things like ITP, um, you know, the, the changes in like safaris, intelligent uh, uh, tracking, uh, prevention, et cetera, which will even make things like C name redirection for existing web um, web analytics uh, obsolete, right? Only with a 24 hour cycle. So we're protected against all of that changes as well. So in terms of analytics and tracking, we've got some really powerful uh, points to why Sitecore beats the competition. But we can actually um, have a very personalized experience post login because we have that safe environment. So that's always been a challenge. And typically, if you look at what banks have been doing in the last few years, they will have a banner that's made available for a post login environment. But that's on a rule based personalization. And they haven't been able to really capitalize on uh, any kind of, uh, let's say, more sophisticated. There's always been cloud-based and based in the, in the US, for example. So um, this for us is a, is a big win. So you can follow up with the you know, maybe next best offer, next best product, uh, co-sell, upsell, et cetera, with your partners as well. 
And, and then uh, finally, you know, this kind of rolls back right back to the beginning of what I was talking about on the art of possible, showing you what financial, like maybe you want to send them some information around financial success insights. And uh, we, from within that campaign management, we can actually get the engagement scoring coming right back to the campaign creation point of view. So you can get that engagement value directly back. So you can, with our uh, ability to import tracking APIs from things like Facebook, Twitter, et cetera, the content that was pushed out to those channels, we can actually get the scoring back for comments, likes, clicks, shares, all of that, plus the website engagement. So we can give you a total engagement value for your content across all the channels that it was used in. So, um, um, you know, and that's what I'm highlighting here. So being able to get that, that, that score. Uh, right. Uh, that uh, helps me wrap up to the last point. And typically, we would you know, look at the opportunities that are here across all of these different channels uh, from awareness through consideration, acquisition, and onto servicing. And here are some of those kind of opportunities you know, that, that we can help uh, power. Um, and at this point, I'll hand back over to my colleague, uh, Abraj, who can take you through some of the um, customer case studies. Thanks, Biran. While I do that, I think there's some more questions coming in, which probably you can sure, address. Sure, I can answer those. Not a problem. Yeah. All right. Excellent. So let me just share my Never losing thread of the data is what Biren talked about and keeping the experience consistent, the personalization relevant across channels, whether you're visiting a branch, reading an email, going to the app or coming back to the website. Right? Many examples of customers who've really elevated their experience. Zurich Insurance is one of those. Uh, one of the largest property casualty and life insurance companies in the world with more than 70 billion in revenue. And uh, Zurich had a big roadmap uh, a few years back when they joined hands with Sitecore. Some of the big challenges that led to this digital roadmap are you know, things that any business would you know, be uh, relating with. Things like looking at on-demand insurance, automating the acquisition and engagement process to as much as possible, improving the experience, and really getting new products out in a faster time to market, right? Uh, constrained by you know, technology, constrained by in-house skills, and really trying to live up to a legacy system that really you know, found Zurich in a position where they were unable to scale and really take on digital the way they should be. So uh, theirs is a partnership we really value. Uh, it's been close to four, five years now that you know they have been with Sitecore. And what the solution really does is gives them a global multi-tenant, multi-site platform, um, <clears throat> which runs uh, on our experience platform, uh, fully headless enabled, hosted on Microsoft Azure on the cloud, and with integrations with Salesforce Marketing Cloud uh, and Microsoft Dynamics. And really what, uh, what Zurich was, has been able to achieve is that they have now taken this experience to at, at a global level. And by using Sitecore, what they've been able to do is accelerate their time to market significantly, whether it's websites, apps, microsites, campaign sites, customer portals, uh, you know, whichever channel or whichever property uh, <clears throat> that they have, you know, which is important in their business, is all built on Sitecore. Uh, the organization has rallied around the platform. They have created a site core, a small site core team in house, which works with partners to really uh, take their new products to market across regions and languages. And <clears throat> they've also been able to personalize the, the experience through branded assets. So it's about as good an example as you will get of a global uh, player in the financial services space who's you know adopted a platform like Sitecore and really elevated the experience 
and improve their business on digital at a global level. Uh, Danske Bank is another example, leading bank in Europe and uh, one of the largest banks, in fact. And for them, really, what was important was to improve the engagement with their consumers and with their customers and with their prospects. And when you do that, when you improve the engagement, when you personalize the engagement, when you become contextual, and when you listen to customers' needs, the quality of your prospects, the quality of the leads that you generate, and the impact that can have on the business uh, really goes up manifold. And that's what Danske accomplished through their partnership with Sitecore. Um, a lot of things were you know, going south in their case as well. Uh, one, they didn't have the mod model platform approach or you know, the, the bent towards creating you know, a mobile first approach. They didn't have any technology that could enable personalization of scale. Um, and their content management overall uh, was, was in a mess because they were using a legacy system which was restricting them from doing anything. So even if they had the vision, they really didn't have the technology to forward that vision. So with Danske, those are some of the key challenges that we met. And what has resulted is that they have now a, a simple and a single solution, which gives them the full power, you know, in terms of marketing, in terms of data, in terms of analytics. It improves the experience by keeping it simple and keeping it contextual. And it what also does is that, you know, with you know their business being a lot about <clears throat> how you integrate with current existing in-house systems, being a bank, uh, that's always the case. And that's where Sitecore has been integrated with you know, core internal systems to improve everything right from acquisition up to customer service. And what some of the outcomes you know, that they could, got out of this was, of course, an, a jump in leads. And you would expect that you know, when you become more personalized, when you become more uh, understanding of you know what people want, there is going to be an increase in conversions. But the more important thing is now that you know the, the data shows that um, <clears throat> it is about outcome-based conversions, right? So people are looking at the right things on the website because they're being shown the right things, right? And the customer feedback has been overwhelmingly positive. Uh, more than ninety percent of their customers are really happy with whatever they have experienced over the past couple of years since. Uh, you know, or a bit more over two years when Danske really took to rolling out Sitecore. Um, in India, we have uh, several customers in this space. Uh, one of them happens to be the Birla, and with them, you know, we are moving them uh, across the enterprise to a modern Sitecore infrastructure um, <clears throat> uh, and uh, really taking them uh, from corporate to asset management to insurance. You know, the entire group is looking at how they are rolling out site code based solution. And again, some core things which don't change, you know, in terms of, you know, how uh, <clears throat> there's a mobile first approach. Uh, it's scalable, uh, taking things faster to market um, and really looking at uh, how they can elevate the experience and improve conversions using websites, mobile apps, and so on, right? So, well, there were many other case studies that you know that you would have gladly you know spoken about. We know that we have um, uh, we have a few minutes left today, so I'll stop here and um, have uh, any questions. If they are, you know, happy to take them. Uh, both Brian and myself are available for any questions. Thank you. So I, I see a question from Almas. Uh, so yeah, if a brand already has their own marketing automation systems and they want to use Sitecore for its CMS and personalization capabilities, does Sitecore have an offering uh, for that too? Uh, and yes, yes we do. So like, uh, one of our strongest partnerships is, of the course is with Salesforce. So to give you an example of how we work with Salesforce, Salesforce has uh, you know, the marketing cloud, uh, so the you know, journey builder, et cetera, within that ecosystem. And in that situation, what we would do is use, uh, we have a service layer within um, experience platform called XConnect, which allows the integration to our third party systems. So any of the triggers, segmentation, stuff like that, that we want to push to that 
third party system, we would be able to integrate. Um, so we have uh, out of the box connectors for, for example, Microsoft, uh, sorry, Salesforce Marketing Cloud, but that same system could be used um, to build connectors to any other uh, the tool that's available on the market as well. But that would be a little bit of uh, implementation work that would be needed to do that. Okay, uh, okay. I, I guess we are pretty much out of time. We have one more question from Kalpesh. Uh, Biren Abiraj, do you want to answer that? Why should brands take that big step from CMS towards DXP? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. Um, I, I would kind of look at it from the other angle, right? Our CMS has rapidly become commoditized, right? So um, I, I would stop thinking about CMS as a unique standalone offering um, because nowadays, if you're, you're right, you could pick up an open source CMS like WordPress or Drupal, et cetera, and build that. And, you know, from, from a customer's perspective, it may look very challenging to move to a DXP, but um, really what we're seeing is this trend in total cost of ownership. Um, over a, a period of time, the efficiency gains and the ability to really deliver you know, uh, excellent customer experience um, really makes up for that difference. And then returns, uh, the ROI over that period is, is phenomenal if um, a, a customer-centric approach is taken. And, you know, and to highlight you know, our DXP, uh, you know, Sitecore, um, as well, the, and I, you know, I reiterated this in our during the presentation. But one of the biggest strengths is the ability to bring that data that we have about the user directly into those front end channels, uh, which is something that is not easy to replicate by using like a, a Frankenstein stack of various open source tools, uh, you know, maybe a, uh, a custom CMS versus you know another off the shelf Martech product, etc. Trying to put them all together basically increases the burden. And then when it comes to things like upgrade paths and you know the ability to bring in new channels, et cetera, that typically will break down at that point. So it, it's, it's a stitch in time uh, argument that if you know, make that investment now and you'll reap the rewards. And particularly now during COVID, this is probably a good time to think about uh, that, that, that path towards a DXP. Abaraj, anything to add? Uh, that is, that's yeah, I yeah, yeah, sure. Sorry, go ahead. Uh, go ahead, Tejas. Yeah, I see uh, there's a question about yeah multiple brands, right? Yeah, so I, I you know, <clears throat> I think I did answer one which was similar, but uh, to answer this question from Justine, uh you can have as many brands, as many websites, as many businesses within the group uh, who are on Sitecore, right? It's one platform that you can use for as many brands as you wish to. There is no limitation in terms of uh, uh, scale or you know uh, features of functionality. And to be honest, there are so many different use cases. I was talking about the example of Zurich, right? Zurich is a company in which you know we're talking about a global scale of site code implementation, right? There, you know, all their websites, different languages, different countries, uh, all are you know on on our platform. In India, for example, I can talk about. Uh, the Adani Group, which has been with Sitecore for more than three years now. And uh, they have uh, different businesses. So Adani Electricity, which is erstwhile BSES in Mumbai, that runs on our platform, right? We have Adani Gas, we have Adani Realty, we have airports, we have, uh, you know, different kinds of businesses. We have the Fortune business, which is the Adani Wilmer business. All of that is on Sitecore, single platform, which is powering all the different BUs uh, through one platform. So yeah, so it's very much possible. Many customers in India and outside are using Sitecore in that way. Thanks, thanks. Uh, I, I guess we are pretty much out of time and I can see there are a lot of questions which both uh, Biren and Abhiraj have been answering in, in the chat box. Uh, in case anybody has any more questions, feel free to send it to the Miram team or the Sitecore team and we are happy to get, get you answers. Uh, on behalf of the Miram team, I would like to thank you, Abhiraj and, and Biren, for showing us the art of possible and showing us how the power of Sitecore platform in terms of creating seamless consumer experiences and personalization. I'd like to thank all the participants, also all the attendees for, for, for their patient listening. And uh, yeah, thanks again and good evening, everyone. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.